You know it's gonna be a long video when you have to write the script by hand. So in this video we are going to talk about the fair value of a stock and we will see how to calculate automatically the fair value of a stock. We will see analytically how to do that. Also in the description I will give you an excel sheet where you can calculate the fair value by yourself. But first we need to understand it. Hey, it's Dario and this is TV Finance, a platform where we can share our best tips and tools when it comes to trading, investing or finance in general. And if you love the subject, please consider subscribing. When we talk about value investing, the first thing that we want to do is to calculate the fair value of a stock, the price of a stock where it's reasonable to buy it. We will see throughout this video why the fair value is not exactly the intrinsic value, but we are going to use the intrinsic value, so the true and real value of a stock, to then calculate what is a fair value to buy the stock today. So first of all we have to understand what's the most important thing about a company, and that's earnings. The earnings or net income is the most important thing of a company. The net income is what the company is supposed to have. It's the purpose of a company to bring home net income. If a company doesn't have net income they are not doing their job. So again I want to underline this. The job of a company is to make money and that make money we call it earnings or net income, but we are going to call it earnings for this video, okay? So then we have to understand where that earnings go. When a company has earnings, they can either put them in their assets as cash or they can put it as dividend. When they put it as dividend, they choose a certain portion of the earnings to give to their shareholders as dividend. And I talked about the dividends in one of the past videos, so I will put a link in the i button here or down in the description, so just check it out if you don't know exactly what a dividend is. But still, when a company has earnings, they can decide to put those earnings or a portion of those earnings in dividends. Now the other thing that a company can do with their earnings is put them in their assets. When a company puts earnings in their assets, it means that they want to transform their earnings in cash, okay? They have cash in their assets. But not only that, they could buy new assets. For example, they could buy new machineries. So all those things, all those earnings go into their assets. The assets represent the gross value of a company. Assets, it's all the company has. Why do I speak about a gross value? Because the company also has liabilities. So when we talk about assets and liabilities, we can subtract liabilities from assets and we get the equity and the equity is the net worth of a company. It's what the company is truly worth. And you can do the same calculation for yourself. If you have a house that's worth $500,000 and you have a debt that it's $200,000, you will have a net worth or equity of $300,000 and that's your truly value as a person. Now I know we cannot put a price on a person, but if we just look at the monetary aspect, the person's value is $300,000. If we go back to the company, that means that if the company wants to sell everything, they want to sell actually their company, the price will be the equity. That's also called the shareholder's equity. That's because as a shareholder you have a portion of that equity. This discussion brings us to realize what we do when we buy a stock of a company. When you buy a stock of a company you are buying the value of a company. So you are buying a certain portion of the equity and you are buying a certain dividend. The sum of those two is the true value of a company. That's what you buy, okay? That's the value that a company gives to you. The dividend is not shown in the equity because it's money that the company already gives to you, okay? And the equity is shown in the company because it's value. It's not possible to grab the equity as a shareholder. You should sell the entire company to take the equity. But nonetheless, you have that value. So if we go back to the house example, you have $300,000 of equity. But until you sell the house, you won't have cash. 
but nonetheless, you have the same value. The same exact thing applies to companies. Even though the equity it's not possible to transform in cash right away and take out as a shareholder, you still have that value. The dividend, on the other hand, is a certain amount of cash that the company will actually give to you. And the sum of those two is what the company will give to you as value when you invest in that company. But now, what does it have to do with the fair value of a company? Well, if you said that dividend and the equity is the true value of a company, it's what we buy when we go on the markets, we need to calculate what is the fair price for that amount of equity and dividend. We do this by calculating in the future how much equity and dividend the company will give to me. Hey, I know it's complicated a little bit, but let's take a five second breath and go hit that like button, okay? If you enjoyed the video, please go down and hit the like button. So let's go back to equity and dividend and understand how we can calculate the future equity and the future dividend. To calculate the future equity and future dividend, of course, we need to use the past, which is the only thing that we have. We have the present and the past. Because again, the past is the only thing that we have. It's the only data that we can use to calculate the future equity and dividend. We cannot guess. There is no guessing, okay? We need to use the past in order to understand the future. So in order to project the equity and the dividend, as I said, we use the past. And we use the past growth of the equity to understand what's the possible equity in the future. Now, there are two projections that we can make. There is a linear projection and there is an exponential projection. The exponential projection should be the most exact. That's because the more money that a company has, the more money they can make. It's like compound interest, okay? So again, the more equity a company has, the more money they can make and the equity can grow even faster. So to do this, we calculate how much growth we had in the past 10 years and we project the same growth, the same rate of growth for the next 10 years and we will have an exponential growth. That way we can calculate in 10 years from now what's going to be the equity. Also, as I said, we have another projection which is linear, which means that we simplify the past 10 years equity as a linear growth, like this, okay? And for the next 10 years we project the same line. As you can imagine, the next 10 years are going to be at a growth rate less than the previous 10 years. And that's fine. That's because it's a more conservative way of seeing the projection. What we should do now is to understand where is the bottom line, which is the linear projection, and where is the optimistic projection, which is the exponential growth. I will put a chart here somewhere so you can understand it better, okay? Now, to project the dividend, what we do is that we simplify all the discussion, all the calculation, by saying that the annual dividend from now to 10 years it's going to be the same as it was in the past 10 years. So we calculate an average dividend per year for the past 10 years and we project the same dividend per year for the next 10 years. Now, of course, we cannot buy the entire company. We buy just one stock of the company. So now what we want to do is to take the equity, the future equity, and divide that number by the shares outstanding. That way we will have a monetary value of the equity from now to 10 years. And that's called the book value. And the book value of a company is the true value of that company. Some companies can even have the price to book value ratio below one, which means that the price on the stock market of the company is less than its true value if the company should fail and sell everything. But again, the minimum value of a company, of a healthy company, should be at least at least the book value plus all the dividends of the 10 years. 
So what we want to do again is to take the book value, the future book value that we just calculated by taking the future equity and dividing it by the shares outstanding. And we want to add the dividends that the company will pay for the next 10 years. That way we have the true value of the company in the next 10 years. Now, what do we want to do with that number? Now, that number is the number that a stock should be worth from now to 10 years. That's the minimum value that the market should pay for a company. Again, the book value plus all the dividends. But we don't buy in the future, we buy in the present. So we need to calculate what should be the fair value now to buy the company. Knowing that in the future, from now to 10 years, the value will be at least the equity plus all the dividends. To calculate this fair value, we will use the risk-free profit. What is the risk-free profit? The risk-free profit is a profit that you would have if you invested in something that has zero risk. And that thing that has zero risk, it's normally the 10 years treasury bond, that it's considered a risk-free profit. So now what we want to do with the discount rate or the risk-free profit is to calculate what is the fair value today for the value that we will have in the future. So the book value plus the dividends that we will have in 10 years. To do that, we do the inverse equation of the compound interest. Instead of going this, we will go the opposite, like this, okay? So it's like asking ourselves, what is the price that today the stock should have in order to have the book value plus the dividends in 10 years if the stock grew at a 2% rate, so at a rate of the risk-free profit. So as I said, all these formulas will be available on the Excel sheet. It's all completely unlocked. You, you can watch all the formulas. I don't care actually, okay? So just take a moment and look at the formulas on the Excel if you are not clear. But if you're not clear, hey, hit me in the comments and I will explain it better, okay? So now again, let's recap a little bit. We calculated the future equity that we will have we calculated what should be the future book value by taking the future equity and dividing it by the shares outstanding and we added the dividends for 10 years then what we did with that price with that amount of money we discounted that by the risk-free profit which again can be two percent for example you should look at the 10 years treasury bond on internet okay now when we have the discounted price that's the fair value. That's a good value to buy the company now, to have at least a growth of a 2% per year and have at least the book value plus the dividends in 10 years from now. If you bought the company more than the fair value, it means that you are buying the company at a price which is more than the minimum of what the company could do. And hey, this calculation works pretty fine, but it's not perfect. Why it's not perfect? Because this type of calculation doesn't count for the valuation of the market. Sometimes the companies are really good and the market is willing to pay more for that company. And we need to take into account that. We cannot only calculate the price of a company thinking that the market will pay just the book value plus the dividends. It's not possible. We need to take into account the valuation that the stock market gives. In order to do that, we need to use something else and to use a formula which is a little bit different. But we will see that formula, that calculation only if you really want. So if you want to see this calculation for for the next video, please tell me in the comments and leave a like to this video and I will make sure I will do that video, okay? And mind you, this calculation works fine, okay? It's not bad, but doesn't take into account the valuation that the stock market gives to a certain company.
But hey, this was all I had to say for this type of formula, for this projection of the equity and dividend in the future. And if you want to download the Excel sheet, you will find it in the description somewhere, okay? I will try to put it there somehow, okay? So if you enjoyed the video, please leave it a like and let me know in the comments down below if you would like to see this next video of a calculation that I personally prefer, which takes into account the valuation of the stock market. And I'll see you in the next video. So how does an index work? What is an index? Who creates indexes? Why should I invest in indexes? All these questions are very crucial if we want to invest our money responsibly. And so in this video, we are going to answer all these questions, but stick around till the end because at the end of the video,